Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 33 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm about to clear out a huge area directly underneath my Thornecraft room. Cool. Uh, I think it's about time we start playing a little bit with Ars Magica. There's some really cool stuff that Ars Magica gives us, and I want to make sure to start taking advantage of it now. So uh, I wanted to get a little bit of infrastructure set up and in place. And I was all about to do this off camera and be like, I'll just have it all cleared out and ready to go before I started the episode. But then I looked at the filler interface, and hey, look, the filler changed. I didn't even know this was happening. Uh, but we've got now options to just kind of click through here and choose which filler structure you want instead of having to, um, you know, remember that recipe with like the bread and the and the glass and all that crazy stuff so that's kind of neat so that changed cool well i guess while i'm here i might as well clear out some terrain what do you say so uh oh right we need to uh have a hardened energy thingy between here and there let's put this guy down like so and we'll set the well let's see i didn't want to mess with this too much that'll be fine the front can be energy output and uh let me real quick request hardened energy conduit just one should be plenty thank you there we go clearing maybe perhaps i hear things happening so and nothing's breaking up here so that's a good sign yep lots of stuff clearing out lots of cool cool stuff happening all right, so uh, basically what I decided was I wanted my Ars Magica room to be right below my Thalmcraft room. So this is kind of like my magical area here, right? My magical dungeon, if you will. Look at this thing, clearing out, doing a good job. Oh, I'll just steal this real quick, don't mind me. Ha <laughs> ha. Gotta love it. So we'll be back in a minute when this is all cleared out, and my plan is to just get started with Ars Magica. Um, we'll see how far we get with it. I'm not sure like how, how crazy and how in-depth I want to get. Eventually we want to have like all kinds of cool magic spells and stuff that you can do, but for now I just want to get the basics in and introduce you guys to Ars Magica so we can kind of get started playing with it. So there's a couple things you're going to want to have to get started with Ars Magica. First off, you're going to want to look around for these blue orchids. They're really nice to find. And you're going to want to get, you know, pretty much anytime you see one, grab it. Because they're not super common, but they are definitely useful. Uh, we're also looking for another type of flower. There's actually a couple things we're going to want to grab while we're out here exploring. And I'm looking for one very important piece to really get started. Something else you're going to want to grab, uh, these things right here, Witchwood. Uh, trees from Ars Magica. They're also very useful. Um, in fact, while I'm here, why don't I snag these leaves and see if I can't find myself a Witchwood sapling, because that's really going to help me out to get started with some stuff. So I'm sure I'll pick one up. How'd I do? Something? Hey, there's one. Cool. There's kind of one. It's hiding. It doesn't want to be picked up. All right. Well, the reason we want those Witchwood saplings, and there's plenty of Witchwood trees around, so I'll find another one, is this, the Aum from Ars Magica 2. They only grow underneath Witchwood trees, and if you have any interest at all in uh, farming these guys, there we go. I got it to come into my inventory. Good. Uh, if you have any interest at all in getting more Aum, you're going to need to uh, grow Witchwood trees. They're not too easy to grow, as a matter of fact. You can't just plant the sapling, but don't worry. I'll show you guys how to do it. It's a little tricky, but, um, you know, you'll see. So I'm just kind of preparing for my Ars Magica adventure by gathering some materials you don't need most of this stuff to really get started but it'll definitely be useful as i'm flying around looking for certain things anyway um, i might as well just grab what i can where i can you don't really need the witch wood itself too much i don't think i don't think i've run into a situation where i've needed the wood just yet but like i said we're going to be uh planting the saplings to grow the trees anyway so if we do need the wood don't worry we'll uh have plenty i'm sure all right, I'll be back in a moment after I get a, just a couple of which would leave uh, saplings. It's not like you need a huge amount, but it's nice to have them. All right, and then um, I'm really looking for something in particular, which I'll show you in a moment as soon as I find it. It's a pool of magical essence. That's what you really need to kind of start off your whole adventure here. 
Hey, there we go. I tracked down what I was looking for. Cool. Uh, this stuff right here is liquid essence. It's kind of like a, a magical energy source within Ars Magica. To get started with Ars Magica, you need to place down an item frame right near one of these essence pools. Now, sometimes they'll spawn in little 2x2 two two structures like this, but you'll also find them in large lakes, and that's going to be good because you can use this stuff later down the line. Simply place a book in that item frame, and the magic starts to happen. Here it comes. So uh, that essence will infuse into the book, and... Ta-da! There we go. We got ourselves this nifty little gadget right here. The secrets of the arcane are unlocked by grabbing the arcane compendium. So this is similar to the Thaumonomicon, if you will. Uh, now this is pretty far away from my base. I'm like way over here. Uh, so I don't really need this essence pool to stay right here. So what I think I'm going to do is, since I'm here, and I'll tell you about the essence pool uh, or the, the uh, arcane compendium here in a moment, but why don't I see what I've got by way of buckets? Because I can pick up this essence stuff and it'll actually be kind of nice to have three buckets. All right, I can handle that. I don't think I can put it in a wooden bucket. I'm pretty sure wooden buckets might not be able to handle that. So let me get three iron as well while I'm at it. Grab this guy here. Oh good, I have a fourth bucket in my inventory. Never mind, we're good. There we go, scooped it all up. So uh, this uh, bucket of liquid essence is gonna be pretty handy. All right, I'm gonna just poke around a little bit more, see if I can't find anything else I might wanna snag while I'm way out here in the middle of nowhere. And we'll be back in a moment. Oh look, here's an example of a larger pool of essence. Nice. I might actually go ahead and uh, mark this on my map because I might want to come back here later. Mid-sized essence pool. That sounds like a good place to put it. All right. Something else you're going to want to find are desert novas. These are the other kind of flower that kind of complement the blue orchids. Uh, based on their name, you can probably assume that they're most likely going to be found in some kind of desert biome. So I'm just going to run around in this desert right over by my quarry. It was kind of on the way back to my base anyway. Uh, and I just want to see if I find any more of these things. They kind of stand out pretty good. So not a big deal. So the Arcane Compendium. All right, let's have some fun with this thing. So uh, first off, there's uh, different sections here on the left, as you can see. Uh, there's a nice little foreword that gives you information, how to use the compendium, different details about how things work, uh, and then the Ars Magica UI. So what you may have noticed is as soon as I grabbed that book, it activated the Ars Magica user interface. You can see on the bottom of my screen here, I've got two little bars, a red one and a blue one. I'll explain what they mean, but basically uh, the blue one is your mana bar. So every time you cast a spell, it's going to drain a bit of mana, but don't worry. Uh, you can easily um, refill your mana bar by just standing around. Uh, your mana just comes back by itself. There's also potions you can brew to bro uh, bring your mana back faster. There's food you can eat to bring your mana back faster and other buffs and stuff that you can apply to yourself to help regenerate mana. So it's not that big a deal. Uh, the other thing, the red bar there is your overcharge bar. I think that's what it's called, something like that. Uh, well, I'll show you what that's all about in just a bit. It's not that big a deal. It's um, pretty simple, but you'll understand it better once I start casting magic spells. Uh, so that's it. If you want, you can type slash AM UI CFG Ars Magica user interface config and you can move all this cool stuff around and there's other options in here too for example if you want your experience bar to always be visible right now it's not always visible but if I hit yes and hit uh, done here, you'll see that I've got a nice little experience bar kind of sitting right there above my armor. That's your Ars Magica experience, which is completely different and separate from your uh, experience bar that your player has, okay? And that's going to be your Ars Magica levels right there. And as you gain levels in Ars Magica, you can cast more spells, and you have a larger mana pool, and your mana comes back a little bit faster, I think, and your spells have more effect and more damage. It's all in all a pretty good thing you want to do. Uh, you can also move stuff around, like so, like if I want to keep this thing nice and centered, like that looks pretty good numeric xp value that's fine this thing you can kind of see where he's sitting trying to keep things nice and organized and centered so that things look good um numeric value uh you can say uh numeric yes and then you'll see a numeric value for both your mana and your um burnout that's what it's called over here there we go. We can move stuff around a little bit. Your experience numerical value. You can also see your buffs. Your negative and positive buffs can be listed. I like to move them towards the top. And then finally, you have um, some armor over here that you can equip. And there's some cool stuff you can do with that. Um, so you also have a contingency. I'll show you what that's about later on. Finally, I like to turn on minimal HUD. Yes. Cool. Durations, yes. Numeric, yes. Show armor status. So pretty much everything, yes.
okay? Uh, the reason I like to have uh, that minimal HUD is it doesn't show anything Ars Magica on your screen unless you have an Ars Magica spell equipped. Now we don't have any spells yet, so it's going to be hidden until we get one of those spells, but you won't see your mana bar until you're actually about to cast a spell, so it's really a nice thing to do. So I recommend putting it on, but of course, totally up to you if you want to do something differently, okay? So to get started with Ars Magica, we can see information about making your first spell. And there's a bunch of details here that you won't have to read because you're watching this video. There's other uh, details about your mana, your magic level, and cool other stuff. Some items, some blocks, and some monsters. Cool. Now, as you encounter stuff in the game and you find different things, it'll go ahead and add entries to your arcane compendium. So we've already found Alm and Blue Orchids and Desert Novas. Uh, Desert Novas being the flowers in the desert, Blue Orchids being over here. Cool. So as you find stuff, you're going to go ahead and uh, discover more and more things. And what we want to do here is kind of follow through in the mechanics and the guide. So let's craft our first block that's going to be necessary. It's called the Oculus. Let's get started. Uh, the Oculus is pretty easy. Some stone bricks, some glass some coal and some blue topaz we can manage that just fine so blue topaz one coal two and I might even have enough bricks on me and it's just a regular old uh, crafting recipe right here there we go oculus achievement get new entry locked Cool. So by crafting that oculus, we were able to unlock a new item in the arcane compendium. Uh, it happened to be the inscription table, which is probably something we're going to want to make. So I'm going to go ahead and craft one of these as well, and then I'll show you guys what this is all about. Okay, so in order to get one of these, we're going to need some paper. In fact, we're going to need quite a bit of paper, so we should probably get around to automating sugarcane production. But eh, we'll get there later. For now, I'm doing ours magica. Cool. So um, inscription tables require the following items. Spell parchment. Okay. You're going to need one of these for the inscription table, but you're going to need them um, as you go along in your Thongcraft career. We're also going to need a feather, apparently, so we'll grab that. Oh, that sounds like it's raining out. And then we just need some of this, 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 and that. Cool. Ars Magica achievement get. Uh, so we've got a new item unlocked here. You can see a bunch of other things starting to unlock because we just unlocked that item. So you can see your book is opening up. You've got more things that you can read about now. Pretty cool, right? Uh, so spell parchment, some blocks, crafting altar. We're probably going to want to make a crafting altar pretty soon. That's going to be an important part, but that's a little bit more complicated. We'll get to that soon. Uh, lecterns are neat. Um, we're going to have the magic wall, particle emitter, witchwood saplings. So what I'm going to do is because I know most of this stuff, I want to kind of clear out um, my arcane compendium. So it kind of notes that I've, what I've read already. And I'll be kind of talking to you guys and explaining the different mechanics, like burnout, like casting modes and magic level and mana. I'll talk to you all about this in just a bit. So let's get started messing around with Ars Magica now that I've got a couple blocks. So you know what I think might be cool is if we used elevators within our Ars Magica slash Thaumcraft room. So making a couple of these things real quick. Remember, it's a vanilla crafting recipe. Let's go straight down here. This looks like as good a place as any to build a nice little elevator system. Cool. Hooray! Looking good to me. Oh, this room's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Well, good thing I brought a bunch of stone. Uh, I can go grab my wand if it's fully charged yet. Yeah, it is. Good. You can also see that I also grabbed a few more um, aura nodes. I've just been kind of doing that off camera every now and then. All right, so we'll shift into this mode, and I'm just going to clean this room up a little bit. Back in a moment. All right, guys, we are back, and uh, I'm kind of uh, cleaned up my room down here. So we've got a nice little Ars Magica room ready to go. Uh, and I've kind of cleared out some space for some of the things we're going to need in order to get started. So first off, what we need to do is place down that good old friend of ours, the Oculus. This is going to be your gateway to magical awesomeness. Basically, what you do is you right-click on the Oculus here, and there's a bunch of different magical traits and abilities listed all throughout here. And what you have to do is unlock them using different skill points. Uh, the skill points you can see currently represent on the top. Most players, or I think all players probably, start with three blue skill points. Okay, there's three different kinds. There's blue, green, and red. And you can see here which different things. So for example, if you want to unlock projectile, you have to click on this. It'll use up a blue skill point, and you'll be able to use the projectile effect in your spells. Okay, there's three different tabs up here as well. Offensive, defensive, and utility. So in the defensive tab, you have the self. Um, 
aspect, which controls, you know, what, what type of spell you're making. So projectile is uh, like a little thing that you shoot. Self, when you cast it, will affect yourself, the player. And touch will affect whatever block you're clicking on, kind of like a right-click effect for a block. Okay? Um, and then as you unlock one, then the ones following the line also become available. So, for example, once we unlock projectile, we'll also have access to the gravity and bounce effects, which means your projectiles are affected by gravity or they will bounce, and also physical damage, which will do physical damage when the projectile hits the target. Then once you unlock, for example, physical damage, you'll have access to fire and magic damage. Cool? So that's pretty straightforward. Now, sometimes you have to unlock multiple things. So for example, area of effect down here, you have to unlock all the ones ahead of it before you have access to area of effect. So you won't be able to get that until you also unlock lightning and frost damage. Uh, so that's what that is. And you can also see that's a green skill point. So you need to get a green skill point. Now, every time you gain a level in Ars Magica, you'll have access to uh, a, a new skill point. I think it's every other level. Um, earlier levels give you blue points, later levels give you green ones, and the really far advanced levels give you red points. And there's other ways to get access to those points as well, which we'll cover, you know, pretty soon. So for now, we get to choose what kind of spells we want, and I haven't really decided what I want to do with. Usually I start off with the defensive skills, because it's really nice having a quick and easy way to heal yourself, especially when you're in battle. So like the self leap ability gives you access to leap self-regeneration would cast regeneration on you which would regenerate your health over time but then you also have the heal ability which instantly heals you for a certain amount of health so that's usually a good place to start that might not be a terrible idea but we'll see so like I said, usually I like to go with the self regeneration and heal for kind of three reasons. Number one, it's uh, instantly available as you start out because you need three um, points to get it. Uh, number two is that um, it's nice to be able to cast the spell because the way you get magical experience is uh, casting the spell and whenever you cast a spell that has an effect though. So if you were to just sit here and start shooting projectiles at nothing, you wouldn't get experience. You have to actually hit something and do damage to it. But your regeneration effect will always work because, you know, as long as you're giving yourself regeneration, you're good to go. Uh, and then thirdly, um, having a nice quick instant heal ability is just a nice thing to have. So let's do it. So simply left click here and you'll see that you have access to the self ability. Now if we grab our um, arcane compendium we can read more about each of these different things so we can see here shapes projectile lets you focus your uh, focus your will and to a concentrated ball which you propel forwards away from you self um, is applying magic to yourself etc etc like I just explained now once you have access to new things like components you'll have them available here in the arcane compendium so you can read about what they do before you go ahead and invest points in them but you only have access to them when there's the next thing in the line so leap and regeneration are available to us leap lets you jump higher Sounds cool. And regeneration uh, lets you regenerate. So it gives you a regeneration buff. Cool. So we're going to go with regeneration. Cool. Now that we've got that, we should now also have access to the heal ability, which basically just directly heals you. Pretty cool. All right. So let's go ahead and hit that up. Nice. So now that I've used up all three points, we no longer have the ability to invest points in Leap because I don't have any more. But don't worry, we'll soon fix that. All right. Next up, what we're going to need is an inscription table right there. That looks cool. So the inscription table is really cool. Basically, what's available here are all the different things that you've unlocked within the table. Neat. So you've got your heal, regeneration, and self. This is where you build your spells. In order to build them, you're going to need a writable book. So let's get ourselves one. Uh, basically, what we want to have is a book that we can write with. So we want a book. Request one. We're also going to need ink. Request one and a feather. We're going to need some more ink. I think we're going to have to do something about that at some point. All right. Now that we've got that all sorted out, we can combine these together to get ourselves a writable book. Nice. And we'll just drop that right in there. So now that we've got the book there, we can specify the spell. Now, every spell in Ars Magica is completely customizable and modular. So basically, if I want to have a spell that both heals me and casts regeneration at the same time, I simply drag the self ability because I want it to affect me. And you'll note here that it says at least one component is needed. So you can't make the spell yet until you add at least one component. I'll go ahead and add regeneration. Now, at this point, casting the spell would cast regeneration on myself. But we also want it to heal me, so I'm going to throw the heal effect in there too. Now it will both, uh, on myself, cast regeneration and heal. Now I can name this if I want, but we don't have to. But I'll call it self regen heal, okay? And then it says here, removing the book will finalize the spell recipe. Yoink. So now I've got this awesome spell recipe called self regen heal. And when I right click on it, we'll see that it's a combination ability of self, which applies uh, the regen and heal ability to the self thing. 
Pretty neat, right? Now, what we're going to need to do is create this spell in an altar. And we're going to need a bunch of different items here in order for it to get going. You can see a bunch of stuff we're going to need. Not too big a deal, though. Don't worry. We'll be able to put it together pretty easily. However, first, we need to get ourselves a crafting altar. This is where the biggest part of Ars Magica comes in. This is the spell uh, creation system that you're going to need to use. Now, the crafting altar has a bunch of different ways to be built. Basically, the material that you build it out of determines how strong of a spell you can have. Okay, The more um, uh, stronger the material, the more effects. So, for example, if we built it out of wood or stone, we can only have one effect per um, system. With sandstone, one effect. Bricks, we could have two effects. Oh, Enderman's coming in to check out what I'm doing. Sorry, buddy. You're not allowed to hang out here. And uh, Witchwood would have three effects. I told you Witchwood's pretty good, but you can also use Nether Brick or Nether Quartz as your um, structure. Oh, man, they're really interested in what I'm doing, aren't they? Get out of here. That's right, Enderman. I think they're uh, starting to get nervous as I unlock more spell abilities. Those Endermen are sneaking right in. Alright, so Nether Brick is kind of a good one to go with. It looks really cool. You could also go with Witchwood or Nether Quartz. Those would be your strongest uh, methods of uh, building uh, the, the main structure here. Okay, but you also need to build some caps. You're going to need five blocks. Okay, we could have glass, coal, redstone, iron, lapis, gold, diamond, and emerald. Ah! Haha, -ha, he snuck in on me. Alright, Enderman, let's go. Do I have any backup swords? I do. I knew he was just waiting. Let's go get him. I'm not going to stand for that. Gotcha. Man, those guys are persistent. Here I am trying to explain mechanics and the Endermen are attacking already. I thought we might have a piece this season, but apparently not. All right, <clears throat> so let's get back to it. So I'm thinking what I'll do here, uh, you could also have Moonstone and Sunstone. Those are um, blocks added by Ars Magica. Um, so really the best altar would be like either Nether Brick or Witchwood and uh, some Sunstone. That basically boils down to how many effects you can have per spell. So this spell really only has three effects on it, so we don't have to worry too much. Um, but, you know, basically, I'm going to start off with a pretty decent one. So let's build it out of nether brick, because that's pretty easy to come by. We could also build it out of witchwood if we wanted to. Um, but we're also going to go with, let's say, I have a decent amount of gold. I don't really think I have enough diamonds that I want to spend that many diamonds on it. Definitely not emeralds. Moonstone blocks, I believe those are nine. Moonstone block. Yeah, we need nine. I don't think I have enough of that either. So maybe we'll go start off with redstone. And, you know, that's three effects. That's not bad. I could also start off with iron. Maybe that would be four effects. That would probably be a pretty good one. Let's start off with iron. And then we'll upgrade this thing later. Sound cool? All right, guys. So in order to get this thing built, we're also going to need a lectern. We're also going to need a magic wall. These things are actually kind of neat. They look really cool. Let's see. Where's the magic wall at? Magic... There it is. Uh, it's just a couple pieces of Ventium dust, which you get by smelting Ventium ore. So let's get ourselves, you know what, I'm probably going to need a bit of this stuff, so let's get just like 10 and just throw it in the smelter real fast. Uh, and then finally, we're going to need, um, oh look, we got an achievement. Cool. Uh, let's see, what achievement did we get? Oh, it just, uh, the Ventium ore. You can also make it into torches, which are kind of neat. You can use them to make Ventium torches. They're pretty cool. Um, and then the final thing we're going to need in this crafting altar is the crafting altar itself. Uh, I think that's everything we need that I haven't forgotten about. Craft, crafting altar. So that's just another Ventium dust on top of stone. It's really pretty straightforward to make. So we'll grab some extra Ventium dust here. We'll throw it in the induction furnace. We'll get what we need. Looking good. Cool. So let's build this thing. What do you guys say? Are we ready? Sure, why not? We got that, and then we're also going to want um, the walls. Cool. Magic walls. They're neat. Cool things are cool. Alright, so we can see that we just got a bunch of extra stuff. We'll kind of go through all that in a moment. Let's run over to our magical area and take a look at building this nifty structure. We're going to need some nether brick, we're going to need some nether brick stairs, some blocks of iron, and some other stuff that we'll kind of get situated and ready. So we can look at the structure here as built within the arcane compendium, and we can see the following. Uh, what we've got here is uh, we have to place one of those um, caps right in the center of a 5x5 five five structure. Okay, and you can also see it layer by layer if you want to do that. 
but I've mostly built enough of these by now to kind of know what I'm doing. So like I said, in the very center goes one of those caps. Now that will probably eventually get replaced by something stronger, like maybe gold or diamond or even sunstone, moonstone, something like that. Moonstone, by the way, comes from uh, meteors that drop out of the sky at night. If you ever hear an explosion nearby, it's probably a meteor, okay? Um, and you can just go outside and find it. Now the magic walls kind of go in here like so. Pretty cool looking stuff, right? Yeah, magic walls, they're neat. All right, and I'm pretty sure we build these three high, is that right? I may have built them enough, but not that much. So yeah, one, two, three high magic walls with the bricks on all side, cool. So we can get that back in. That looks pretty good. Now you're also going to want to have a lectern and a lever. These guys are both very necessary. So the lectern can go here, for example, and your lever will go there. Looking good. Let's just confirm. So we've got the lectern and then the lever. Okay, that's opposite the lectern. And then uh, the next level up, we want some stairs facing downwards. And then we want stairs facing upwards all around. So on top of these um, caps up here, we'll kind of put you, 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 and you. And then we want some stairs. This is where these go. I'm pretty sure, yeah, stairs facing outwards. Cool. Jetpack definitely helps with this kind of build. And then um, we also want the stairs facing kind of downwards like that on these. Cool. So you can see here we've got stairs and then we want stairs facing outwards like that. Neat. Terrible placing stairs, I know. I'll fix it. Uh, basically what we want to have here then is you and you. And then we want that crafting altar block right in the center. And then from there we can kind of place our stairs a little bit better. There we go. And finally, get this thing placed like that. All right, that looks pretty good. I think that's it. So we've got our whole setup here. So that should be what we need. Um, let's go ahead and place our self regen heal book on here. Now you'll know that your um, book doesn't have too many components in it if it doesn't turn red. If this turns red, then it means that your altar here is not powerful enough to create the spell you're trying to create and you need to upgrade some stuff, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? So let's get the materials we need. We need a blank rune, those are easy to make. We need two om and some ventium dust and a bunch of other stuff. But one of the things we're gonna need to get set up is an essence conduit set up. So we need uh, 500 essence, we need neutral essence. Uh, we need some a rune, an apple, a green room, a spell parchment. So everything else is pretty easy to get and self-explanatory, but why don't I talk to you guys real quick about uh, what's involved in getting some essence and this is where that uh, liquid essence that I got earlier it's gonna really help out now that we've gone ahead and started making stuff we can see some new entries added to the tab here we have structures like the light nexus the essence nexus and the dark nexus okay this essence nexus nexus is your neutral one so um, basically it's a neutral uh, nexus and this one generates energy by the raw essence liquid that we found in the world we basically um, give that uh, raw essence liquid to this nexus and it'll turn it into energy that can be used to power some of the machines added by Ars Magica. Okay, so it's real simple. Uh, we just need some stone bricks capped with some chiseled stone bricks in a one, two, three, four, five by five pattern. Okay, and I've kind of prepared over here where I want this to be. So we want one, two, like that. And I'm trying to remember, there we go, chiseled stone brick. So I'm gonna need four of these, so let's just get a bunch of this. Like that, okay? And to build this thing, like I said, it's a five by five. Three in the middle, three in the middle, and then you guys like so. And then right in the middle of this guy, we have to put some chalk. Now there's three uh, different colors of chalk, the blue for the neutral, the red for the um, 
uh, dark nexus and the white for the white nexus. Okay, so blue chalk is made with clay, vintium, flint, blue dye, and paper. That doesn't sound too bad. We can even get it right here. So let's get some clay, paper, lapis. What else was needed there? Flint, that's right. And I've got that extra Ventium dust on here. And while I'm down here, just because I'll probably be crafting every now and then, might as well just create a quick crafting station from Tinkers. We'll just kind of throw it in the corner. And then we can, uh, by now, probably received all the items we need. So we should be able to shift click that guy. And you'll know that this thing works when you right click in the center and it turns from a black color to blue and starts spinning. So we've got ourselves an Essence Nexus. Nice. How do we power it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we're going to need to get ourselves the following things. Uh, let's get that essence bucket here. We'll get all four of them. Can't hurt. One, two, three, four. Nice. Now, the way this works is, and I'm going to switch into bat mode because this will just be a little bit easier, um, we need to feed in um, to this essence nexus the liquid. So I'm thinking, where do I want to set this up? Do I want it in the back? Do I want it in the front? It shouldn't hurt to break this block. Okay, I didn't think so. And what you want to do is lead straight into the underneath of this block. So right under here, this is negative 86 by 39, negative 86 by 39. So right here, we want to have the essence liquid show up. And by just placing it there, you'll kind of see it starting to fill up that essence nexus there, and it's good to go. The good news is that it can reach out into flowing blocks of water, so you don't have to actually put the essence liquid right down underneath. Um, as long as it flows underneath that thing, like so. Once it flows out and hits there, it'll start draining from that um, essence block in the center and start filling up your um, little nexus thingy here. Cool? Now, unfortunately, we have kind of hit the wrapping up point for this episode. It's a good point to wrap up, though, because there's a couple other things we need to make before we can really kick off and get started making spells. Um, there's a couple tools and useful gadgets to have. So before we get into those, I'm going to wrap up the episode here, do a little prep work ahead of time off camera, and then when we come back next episode, I'll be ready to show you guys creating our first spell and having some fun with Ars Magica. And there's also some very, very useful and powerful machines that we're going to want to get our hands on that are going to help us out with this whole system system and uh you know just a couple other cool things to play with all right for now this is direwolf 20 signing off hope you guys have enjoyed this episode we'll be back next time to start making some nifty spells getting into ars magica and like i said there's a couple machines in particular i have planned to use and that's why i want to get started with ars magica so we have the infrastructure to start using those machines all right guys direwolf 20 signing off take it easy